My character escaped town, stole a car, ran away. Season two picks up on he's, he's been missing, and finally we find out where he is, and his truck that he had stolen broke down, and he ended up in an Amish farm. This is like kind of the grown-up equivalent of like when you get really mad as a kid and you run away and you make it like three blocks. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. David is not a capable person. No. I'm shocked that he Made knew that how far. to drive the car. Ended up in this Amish farm, and part of that came from sitting with our writers at the beginning of season two, saying like, what would be the most wonderfully strange and sad place for David to end up? A place that he knows nothing about. Is the um, most uncomfortable. Is the most uncomfortable. Miriam makes the most delicious butter. Yeah, I mean, she starts pounding that cream about half an hour too early in the morning, but it tastes exactly like the butter we had at the Ritz in Paris, you know, that sort of saltless butter. Well, once again, thank you for nurturing our David during such a difficult time. Well, we should be thanking you for coming. We've spent two sleepless nights wondering what would happen if nobody came. Would we be stuck with him? And we all thought, if it's an Amish community, a community of people that really pride themselves on like the simplicity of life, what would that look like? And so the, the episode is really sort of about this family realizing where he is and going to get him and try to- Once some of them realize she's act he's actually missing. Yeah. <laughs> and then getting there, and he's been having a great time the until butter's we great. realize <laughs> that he's been annoying the entire farm and they want him gone like yesterday. My favorite part of that was uh, there's a shot where I'm found in a field and I'm holding a pitchfork watching a young Amish girl till the land and... Being very helpful. The worst human, <laughs> just watching her sweat. From an aesthetic standpoint, I knew that the costuming in that moment had to be something very... That the contrast of David and what he chose to wear in this field had to be something outrageous in order to sort of get the gag of of just the, the sheer absurdity of the, of the situation. And I love fashion, I have, I pay attention to it, and there had been this piece uh, from Helmut Lang that I've always sort of admired and, and wanted for myself. It was a different time. Now I don't think I can get away with wearing it, but it was a mohawked, hooded sweatshirt. And I remember at the time thinking that could be a great piece. So I spent about a month and a half scouring the internet for it and finally found it on eBay. So it was actually the one you had been it dreaming of? It was the of. one that I had been dreaming of from years prior and we got it and I'm sitting there with the mohawk up and these Balenciaga sunglasses in this field. Very and, practical. Uh, and it, I, it worked. I think it was, I mean, he did not look like he belonged there at all. It entirely worked. I, I, the, the images and the pitchfork is so huge, it's great. Completely absurd. <laughs> um, as a lot of David's moments are, mm. which I love. Um, There's a bug on your dress, I think was the line yes. that got him to leave. Mm -hmm. 100%, yeah. 100% it was. He wasn't wearing a dress, he was wearing a skirt and a long tunic hoodie. Um, but she's Amish. But I she's mean. Amish, and there actually was many bugs on my dress. Ooh. And uh, you know, for me that was a tough scene to shoot. <laughs> I feel like some of the fashion when taken outside, watching you, watching Catherine, mm. watching like all of the, like the heels, like in these small towns, yeah. like down the streets. Well, that was a really important part of the show for me because I, it, it, clothes, particularly in this story, tell so much. It, it tells the audience, it reminds the audience continually where these people came from and just how much money they came from. And, um, for me, it was also important to authenticate that experience, and if there were people who were interested in fashion, designer clothes, uh, that they would be able to recognize pieces that we're showing. So we had such a small budget that part of that challenge was, where do you get designer clothes when you have nothing to work with uh, in terms of money? So for me, it was almost a year-round experience of mining eBay and consignment stores and vintage stores and uh, all of these different sort of consignment apps now that have popped up for clothes mm -hmm. and bartering and negotiating them down to prices that we could afford uh, and it was, it's the most insane. And then you're out there on location experience. and it's not like normally on a set you would have doubles or triples of no, like any of your outfits. So what happens one. if that like- Nobody can spill. Nobody you cannot, can get caught on anything. Nobody can have ketchup or any kind of like colored juice. 
Uh, there are clothes that come out immediately when we wrap, like large oversized shirts that we'll sort of put around our actors to not allow anything to spill on the clothes. What happens if someone breaks a heel walking down, you know, like a Fingers semi crossed, <laughs> nothing has happened yet. Okay, Knock on wood, we have not had anything go wrong now that oh I've God, said it out I'm loud. I'm so sorry. Our I'm whole sorry. wardrobe department's going up in flames. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. It's been a really fun thing to play with clothes. Um, and they, they add a level of humor that we don't have to write. Yeah. And as a lazy person, that's really <laughs> helpful. But uh, except all the time it took you to find them. Yeah, I never said I was bright in terms of <laughs> the way like I spent shopping. my time. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm going to come out of this whole experience with a terrible <laughs> shopping habit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's healthy. It's fine. Yeah, now the show's paying for it. <laughs> when the show's done, it's just going to oh. be like, sir, you have $35,000 on your credit card. How do you plan on paying for it? Mm -hmm. Just write another, another great show yeah, exactly. that we'll do another binge, yeah. binge mm -hmm. podcast on.